Hey everybody, I wanted to take a quick look at InHair inside of Maya 2013 and in doing so I also want to take a look at Mudbox and some of the curve tools that we added that make it a lot easier to generate curves on your surfaces but then I want to use those curves to sort of sculpt the hair into a shape that I want inside of Maya. So let's just kind of take a quick overview at the way InHair works inside of Maya. In this case I've got a character with just sort of this skull cap that's attached to his his rig and what I want to do is populate that with some hair. So if I just go to my InDynamics menu and go into my InHair menus you can see that uh, we've essentially stuck with the same tool layout that we had in the classic hair. We've even got a classic hair menu at the bottom. But uh, this should make it really easy. If you've ever used Maya's hair tools in the past, you'll recognize all of the, the tools that we've added in here. So you can make selected curves dynamic and attach them to surfaces. You can also uh, create paint effects as well as NURBS curves in both. And in, that's, in this case, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create a new hair system and uh, make sure, of course, if you want to create it at selected points, yeah, you can see those options in there. Basically all the same options that we had before. And when we create those hairs, the main difference now is that we're tied to a nucleus solver. So what that allows us to do is react to anything that is tied to that same solver without doing any extra work. So if we had a field, uh, well in this case the field is built into the nucleus solver just like it always has been. So we have gravity, wind speed, uh, all of the different things that are tied to in cloth and in particles, but now the collisions and things also react to those within the same system. So let's convert our mesh to an a passive collider. Now these hair systems without any extra work uh, this hair system will collide with this face. So let's go ahead and hit playback. Uh, we'll use our interactive playback and you can see right away that um, those hair follicles bounce and react the way you would expect. So that's pretty cool but let's take a look at what we can do with that if we rewind and open up our hair system shape. First of all, first of all we've got self collide and that's a, a nice feature. Uh, we've got the ability to display things like the, the collision thickness, um, the different self collision thickness and so forth, similar to the way we can with in cloth and in particles. And what we'll start doing, let's change the look of this a little bit. We can increase the number of hairs that go into each one of the clumps. Uh, we can change the width scale. Of course we can overdrive these values. If I want a wider base we can do that. Uh, we can have thinning. A lot of different things, like I said, very similar to what our, our previous hair system offered with the exception of being able to sort of maintain that volume because of the self collision but also being able to uh, react to in ridges without going through a lot of extra effort. So that, that should save a lot of time. But one thing I want to do in this particular case is make our hair system, and I'm actually going to go in and delete this particular hair system by going into my menu and saying I want to delete the entire hair system. And I'm going to delete the nucleus node in this case as well. And one thing I want to do is actually mimic the hair that we have here. Now in this case this is sort of a, a games type character, but if I wanted to create some marketing material that had a little bit more realistic type hair uh, or represented uh, this shape of this uh, hair a little bit more, you can see it might be a little uh, difficult to do using those follicles that I had before. So one way of, of creating some curves to pass those follicles along is to pull curves from the surface. So I can go in and uh, convert with my modify menu uh, these edges, these poly edges to curves. That's one way of generating these curves. Or I could make the surface live. Uh, we could go in and just use the status line and just hit that magnet button and then go to my curve tools and then click on the surface and create curves that way. But it's not quite as freeform and I might not get exactly the shape that I want. So one of the things that we added inside of Mudbox 2012 is the ability to create curves directly on the surface uh, with a little extra control. So that's what I decided to do in this case. So we'll just take this surface and we'll send it over to Mudbox as a new scene. And here's the surface over in Mudbox. Now I've uh, turned the texture off or deleted the texture so we can see it a little bit better, uh, see a little bit better what I'm actually going to do because I really just want the curves, not this surface. That's what I'm interested in. And in Mudbox 2013, what we've done is added a new curve tab down at the bottom. Uh, one of the other things that we've done inside of Mudbox is give you the ability to change your interface. So uh, if I turn off this lock layout, we can pull that curves tool directly out uh, of the interface and dock it wherever we want. We can save these layouts now and do some uh, a lot of other different things. So this sort of 
mimics the ability to um, in, that we have inside of Maya to sort of move these tools around and sort of rearrange our interface uh, in, in some different ways that uh, we might like. So, in the curve, in the case of the curve tools, uh, we've had curve tools in the past inside of Mudbox, but one of the things that we've done now is make it a lot more freeform and easy to control and create. So let's take a look at how that works. So if I click on my create curve menu, you see that we get a lot of the same options that we've had in the past in terms of uh, brush attributes. Uh, we've got stamp spacing, uh, we've got mirroring control, size, and so forth. And we now have the ability to either snap to curves. So when we, we're creating these curves just by sculpting on the surface, we can use those curves to either sculpt or paint. But in this case, I'm not going to do either of those. We're going to use these to create some guide curves for our hair. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. I'm going to increase the stamp spacing to the default. And you can see as I start to draw this curve, you get this sort of blocky line. And as soon as I let go, it smooths that curve out. Now, in this case, I want to turn that down a little bit so I get a little bit more of a, a softer effect. And then I can just start sculpting these curves right on the surface. And you can see I get a much more uh, sort of a sculpting feel. The curves are a lot more natural and I can experiment with them a lot more quickly than I can using those methods that I showed you inside of Maya. So in this case we can create, give him his mutton chops and you can get the idea of what we're after. So let's go on back over to Maya. We can either use our update button or we can just send the selected objects. We can go into the object list, select all those curves and send the selected objects back to Maya. So let's do that now. So here we are back in Maya. I've already got those curves created and I'm going to turn off the hair geometry and turn on the curves. So these are the curves that were exported directly out of Mudbox. So what can we do with those inside of Maya? Well the great thing is all I have to do is select all of those curves. Let's go ahead and uh, reference out our character so we don't select him. I'll select all those curves and select the skull cap that we've created. Now there's a couple of things that I can do. I can either go into the in here menu, and let's tear this off really quickly, and I can make the selected curves dynamic and attach them to the selected surfaces. And in this case, I think that's what I'm going to do. But what will happen is a couple of these that are floating off in the distance, they'll actually get attached to the surface, but that's going to be okay for me. So we'll make these um, just paint effect strokes. And once I do this, you'll see that we'll get a lot of little curves on the surface. And what we need to do in this case is just go into our hair system. First off, instead of one hair per clump, we actually want to increase that and increase our clump width. So right away you can see we get a much better representation of the shape of the hair that matches our geometry. Uh, let's increase the clump width scale. And because we have this expandable graph widget, we can really get in and start to refine how this looks. So let's take this and make it um, smooth. We'll take this tip, and you can see we can have, we have total control over the tip of this. Let's make that smooth. And I might not want that kink in there, so we'll make that uh, either linear or spline. That'll work. And essentially go in and refine what that shape looks like at a pretty high level. And then once we're done there, we might want to thin it out so it doesn't look quite so uh, so perfect. And we can change things like um, you know the clump twist, the, the clump clump twist rather. And on a per follicle basis, we can go in and let's grab say uh, a follicle here. Now one of the things that we might want to do is just to make it a little easier to see is to turn off the strokes and grab one of those follicles and you can see that uh, that shows up in my menu and then we'll turn back the strokes one more time and then we can go in and change things like the clump width multiplier so that one clump if we want that one to be really big we can do that uh, or thin. Uh, we can change the density of the the hair so if we were more interested in the maybe the hair in the front we can increase the density of that and do things like the curl we can change the the twist offset and so forth so if that you know, we want to twist that one clump we can do that really easily from here uh, it's really easy to go in and change things like the shading because that's um, going to be important when it comes to rendering and if we grab our selected object there we can go into the shading and one of the things I like about the control that we have over the shaving, shading of the hair is we can go in and change things like the color randomization. Hair is not a perfect color, so we can go in and change things like the, uh, the hue randomization. So if we wanted some sort of funky space color, we could do that. Or we could base the 
overall darkness on that hue randomization at a sort of a, a level and give it some different highlights. Uh, we can change the diffuse randomization, the specular randomiz randomization, and so forth. So this is a really great way to, again, get that look that you want of the hair. And of course, we can go in and take a look at uh, a final rendered image. We get a little bit closer to uh, a representation of the hair that uh, that we want. It's a little bit dark, but I was trying to match um, the look of the actual geometry, the texture that's on the geometry, and we have a little bit of highlighting in there and, and some other things. And so anyway, that is a quick look at how we can get hair curves inside of Mudbox and use those to easily sculpt our hair inside of Maya.